Uh, oh, Jack. Awkwardness. Awkwardness is commencing. Yep. What's up, uh, not much. Working on things at the studio today. So that happened. Marvel or DC? Uh, you know, you don't you don't have to pick. Uh, though I, I I I will say I hate the way DC runs their universe. I, I mean, you, you you it's hard to to get into a DC. Not that I've not that I've been reading many comic books lately anyway, but I, I don't I think I'd be a happy DC fan because every year it seems like they reboot their universe. I mean, it's it's hard to get into a book when your your continuity is invalidated every six months. But I mean, as far as me having a Marvel or DC bias, I mean, my favorite comic book character is Spider Man, and my second favorite comic book character is Batman. So you know, I mean, I don't I don't try to pick a favorite team and stick with it. What about favorite teams? I was talking Marvel or DC. Oh, sure. Sure. And I was talking about how it would probably be pretty frustrating to be uh, a hardcore DC fan when they reboot their continuity every eight months. <laughs> how many Infinity Crises can you have? I, I, ex exactly. <laughs> exactly. The new 52. The new, new 52. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. sounds like a clusterfuck. But I mean, you know, it was it was kind of the same thing of Marvel back in the day. You know, like you have your you have your X Men, you have your Uncanny X Men, you have your Amazing X Men, you have your X Men Children of the Atom. You know, there that's that's just comic books in general. And mm -hmm. I am a Marvel fanboy, but keeping up, you know, you just got to pick your book and, and stick with it. <clears throat> that's the real thing. And so like. You know, I I got back into comic books. I left for a while, and I got back into it when, when the ultimate versions of Marvel superheroes came back, and, and I thought that those were great because you know yeah. it was a new, clean universe. <laughs> so I really liked yeah, and that. You know what? It, at the same time, they didn't have to invalidate the old Marvel universe either. Right. I mean, I I thought that the ultimate universe is just smart, mm -hmm. smart thinking on Marvel's part. But well, and you know, like like my wife collects both regular X-Men and Uncanny, and it, they're two di completely different storylines, and I would have the hardest time keeping up with that kind of continuity, where they're just like, wait, what's Cyclops doing in this one? Well, oh, no, no, he's dead in this one. And th you know? <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, I'm sorry, you were trying to have rich time? I'm sorry, I'll just keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would... Who would win in a fight? Question from the stream. Okay. Batman or, or Spider-Man? Uh, Spider-Man would mop the floor with Batman. And Batman is my second favorite comic book character. This isn't this isn't like me being like a biased Spider-Man fanboy. Spider-Man would wipe the floor with Batman. It would not even be close. Whoa. Whoa, Rich. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Spider-Man would bench press a fucking Buick. <laughs> he's, he's, in, he's, he's, he's got insane reflexes. Uh -huh. He's got, he's got precognitive reflexes. Absolutely. He's dodging punches before they're thrown. He would wipe the floor with Batman's cape and Batman attached. <laughs> Batman would be the mop handle. Yeah. Yeah. For all of Batman's jujitsu, um, Spider-Man, the, the spider sense is what wins out, 100%. Yes. Well, One. that plus, plus the speed, plus the strength. <laughs> Spider-Man's Spider not an idiot, plus the webbing. Yep. Yeah, oh, I I mean, I agree with you. I just, I like, I like how worked up you're getting about it. I've given this thought. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, but see, Gobbledygook raises an interesting question, which is, what about Christian Bale versus Andrew Garfield? Obviously, Christian Bale is a super strong, crazy person, so he wins. Hold on, hold on. Is it an ambush, or was Batman aware before? You can't ambush Spider-Man. Yeah. Unless you're, unless you're Venom. So, like, Batman can't even really set up a trap. Right, because the second that Spider-Man gets close to the trap, he senses danger. You understand. <laughs> so there's nothing that Batman could set up ahead of time that Spider-Man wouldn't know as soon as he got there. Have That's some Spider-Man amount song. of knowledge beforehand. Yeah. If, like, in any of these situations, <clears throat> I think you have to assume that both parties are prepared for battle. Yes but not necessarily prepared for battle they're, against each other. They're everyday tools. Yes, they're everyday they carry. Normally carry around with them. Yes. So Batman, um, you know what? We'll even give Batman the Batmobile because he, he rides that around. So the, <laughs> the Batmobile crashes into Spider-Man while swinging through New York slash Gotham, and they, they have it out. Spider-Man wins. What? And by wins, he gives Batman a little wedgie and swings away because they don't yes. kill each other. No, no. <laughs> Batman would humiliate, uh, yeah. Spider Man would humiliate Batman and mm-hmm. then just go about his day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Batman might then try to counter, in which case, Spider Man will win again because he's fucking Spider Man. <laughs> um, Spider Man is. I think I don't know if we've ever one, had a bro one, moment about Spider Man, but Spider Man is my absolute favorite superhero. So. The one recourse Batman would have would be to find Peter Parker's identity and just just expose him. Mm-hmm. And that's about the only thing Batman could really do to Spider Man. I saw this awful I saw this awful like new version of the Justice League that's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And and basically that's how Batman stopped Superman is just by calling him Clark. Oh yeah, okay, it's, okay. It's a really awful. It's a cartoon movie, like called like League of Tomorrow. Or what, I don't know what it's called. It's awful. I, I hated it. They, they, they make a lot of standalone DC animated stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was, and and that's basically how he stops Superman. He just goes, "Really, Clark?" And that stops Superman because because that's dumb. But anyway, I'm gonna start playing. With, uh, I'm gonna try Lord of the Flies. Um, we can continue talking about how dumb Batman is. Look, there, there are plenty of people who could beat Spider-Man, but Batman is not one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he just, he doesn't have the firepower. Like, Superman, he would, like, accidentally break Spider-Man's face. <laughs> yeah. But but Batman, no. That's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about how much I hate Superman as a character? You can. I, I I won't agree with you, well, but here here's the thing. Superman is very powerful. And I find that in most situations the writers of Superman don't handle his weakness correctly. Mm-hmm. And of course his weakness is caring about other people. Okay. Uh, obviously, obviously, kryptonite is his weakness, but fuck that because there's always a way around kryptonite. Apparently, it's, <laughs> Superman's real weakness is he doesn't want people to get hurt. He's trying to help everybody, and those are the I good think, Superman stories. I I think the problem is worrying about Superman being overpowered. I think the thing with Superman is you want to see him be overpowered. That's the whole point. Is that he just kicks ass. <clears throat> But that's not the whole point. The whole point is he kicks ass, but he do- he's doing it for a purpose, and his purpose is his weakness. Okay. You know, like, of course he kicks ass, and the, the stories that fuck up Superman are just when he's in a giant punching battle with an also-powerful alien. Those are the lamest stories. But the stories where he's just up against some run-of-the-mill thug who has hostages, and Superman has to figure out a way to save the day and not get any of the hostages killed. That's a good Superman story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoy the idea of Superman, but very few have gotten Superman stories right. 
I, I have not given that as much thought as Batman versus Spider-Man, so. <laughs> oh, god damn it, I wasn't paying attention again. This is going to be a short run. Eh, shit happens. You know, I'm going to try, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm officially trying now. <laughs> god damn it. I'm ashamed at my Isaac skill right now. I might just tank this run. Are uh, you far into it? No. Yeah, tank it. I'm tanking it. You guys, I'm tanking Or, you it. know, you could fight on and see how far you can get. No, fuck that. I like, want like in the true spirit of Isaac, uh -huh. you would fight on. Yeah, no, I don't think that's true. Isaac would just start over. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, Isaac would start over because I just did. <laughs> how about that? Okay, okay. I, I tell you what Isaac does. Ooh, money. Better round, better round already. We're dealing, we're dealing much better with this already. Come here, you stupid fucking spider. Okay, great. Spider. 60, 60's Spider-Man versus 60's Batman. 60's Batman operates on such a level of of reality that I that that I can't even conceive of those two characters meeting each other. <laughs> There's a time when you had things like like Batman in a like a rainbow colored costume for some reason and mm -hmm. all sorts of weird things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine those two <laughs> coexisting. And 60's <clears throat> Spider-Man was remarkably similar to modern day Spider-Man. Yes. Uh, and so, while I agree with your with your knee jerk premise of those two do not exist in a world in which they can exist together, it would mm -hmm. it, it would still be Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> sixty Spider Man had some deep shit going on. Um, I have all the collections of the early Spider-Man books, not the actual comics, because I, I've got the I've got the, the the Marvel Masterworks edition of most of those. I yeah. think I got the Steve Ditko run for sure. Some oh, of the yes. early, and I do ah. as well, and they're great, and and they're they're very similar tonally to modern day Spider-Man, yeah. which speaks to how good a character Spider-Man is. It helps that I discovered that shit when I was 15, when Peter Parker <laughs> was also 15. Yes. yes. There was a lot of identifying going on. <laughs> True that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how many people get into superheroes when they're adults. Is, it, is, the, is the answer nobody? Uh, sh probably. <laughs> Are superheroes just a kid thing? I, I don't I don't know. The movies are making people check out the comic books. I don't know. If that's historically ever happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure it does. I'm absolutely sure it does. I mean, these characters are well and alive because of the movies. Mm -hmm. The only reason um, I'm trying to think of a modern day uh, Hellboy. I only checked out Hellboy because of the movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I'm going to say absolutely people check out comics because of movies. I think I checked out Hellboy because Eric Larson was a fan, and I I, I love Eric Larson. Mm -hmm. Savage Dragon was was great. Okay. And I, I never read Savage Dragon. But uh, I, I enjoy the, the Hellboy books. They're some fun books. And I only got in... I only read those books because of the Hellboy movie, which I didn't think was that great, but... It was something. I, I have real problems with the Hellboy movies. I don't think that Guillermo del Toro can direct action. Mm -hmm. And that sucks because he's done Hellboy and he's done Robot Jocks Part 2. And I think he's really bad at action. I'm gonna, what is that movie called? What is Robot uh, Pacific Rim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got an eye on the chat here. So. Good. No, keep an eye on the chat. I thought of it. I thought of what the movie was called. So yeah, both Hellboy and Hellboy: The Golden Army, um, while I thought were fun, were really disappointing because they were lacking. They were lacking some action that I like in my superhero movies. 
Mm -hmm. so. I don't have I don't have an incredible amount of love for the Hellboy movies. I have a mild amount of love. People people in the chat keep asking me about what I think of current comic books. I I have n I swear to God I have not been in a comic book store since one more day. <laughs> which which was my my official last straw. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You got to get back in. Yeah, it's it's you know I I, I I like comic books, but it's too expensive a hobby now. That's really true. Like five bucks an issue? I, I, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. You got to get yourself an iPad. Yeah. Because they have you know digital. They have digital networks and subscription plans and all that hoozy. Mm. Let's see. That's what Lisa does. She loves it. <coughs> Comic books. It's been a while since I've been to a comic store as well. I will yeah. say that. Only because it's goddamn expensive. Which is just the truth of it. It's a it's an expensive, expensive hobby. That's that's the only reason I, I wouldn't like I, I know I controversially during one of the uh, streams I I recommend somebody not get into comic books. And that's that's not out of a hate of comic books. It's just <laughs> it's an expensive Expensive hobby. It really is. Ooh. Mom's Pearl or Liberty Cap. Okay. Chat. What? What? Oh. My wife. <laughs> what 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 happened? Something happened? What what's going on? Oh everyone I I, I talked about how Oh, I guess maybe I've never said her name before. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, my wife's name is Lisa. I mentioned that Lisa has the Marvel reading app. Um, and, okay. And, okay. The, and the chat was just like, Lisa? Lisa? That's my wife, um, who is really into comics. Um, and now I'm asking them, do I want Mom's Pearl or the Liberty Cap? No, I need one of them. Yeah, wasn't he? Um, oh God, being being a vintage music instrument collector—that's got to be a fucked up hobby. Who? Someone tell me. What, 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 Mom's Pearl gives you soul hearts. Sometimes Liberty Cap changes your mushroom. Go Pearl. Okay, yeah. I I would like a soul heart sometimes, so I'm gonna go with Pearl. That gives me what? a soul heart. What do we think of Why the Last Man or Preacher? Oh, you like Preacher, right? I I adore Preacher. I want to borrow that from Pre you sometimes. Preacher might be one of my favorite comic books of all time. That's that's counting the Watchmen. Really? Yes. I mean, it's I want so it, It's uh, really funny. There's some really <laughs> some really dark humor in Preacher and some some great blasphemy mm. and and fun some great uh, blasphemy do yeah, you find it, some blasphemy to be subpar <laughs> uh, yeah i'm sure there's there's probably subpar blasphemy out there i've never heard anyone compliment blasphemy before is i guess <laughs> what i'm saying I, jack i'm i'm an atheist nothing's <laughs> no no and you know i it's not it's not that it's i've never heard anyone like go out of the way to say ooh that blasphemy was top notch <laughs> Because it's hysterical. <laughs> there's right. the there's the inbred descendant of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's probably it's probably one of my one of, part of one of my favorite storylines of preacher. Oh, that's really funny. Um, then there's why the last man, which started strong and ended weak. It it just kind of fizzled at the end. Mm -hmm. Why the last man? Uh, yeah, it's it's a oh, Y colon the last man. Yeah, every every single last male uh, mammal on Earth dies except for one. This oh, one okay. teenage kid called Yorick. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that sounds great. What are new comics? To... I have no idea. I have no idea. This is a question to the chat. Like, what what's new in the comics world? 
Here, you got what you got here is two. <laughs> you got two old fogies who at one point loved comic books. Mm -hmm. Give us, recommend to us the one we will read one thing, <laughs> and only one thing. And here's the stakes: if it's garbage, we're done with comics forever. And I'm not even making. I'm not even making that promise. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. I'm saying uh, I, I will I will read I would, one thing. I wouldn't get into comics again unless I had a shitload of disposable income. Well. No, what I'm saying is if it's garbage, I give up on comics for always. For you know, like, okay. right now it's like, yeah, I still enjoy comics and I'll pick up the odd, you know, Sandman mystery theater uh graphic novel now and again, collection now and again. Give me one Give me one I would do. I work only in extremes. <laughs> only a Sith does that. Saga. I, Read that. I'm sorry. Did you just make a... I know, and I'm sorry. Oh my god, there's a new 52 Supergirl? I'm so into it. <laughs> oh my god, where's your shout-out? Face-eating cutie pie. If you are a new subscriber, thank you for subscribing. I super appreciate it. I apologize if I didn't give you a shout out. I was I was playing a video game. If you think you think they'd lie about that, what? they just want. You think that you think they'd lie about being a new subscriber? You think you think that person just wanted a second shout out for some reason? I mean, they're probably a new subscriber. Probably a new subscriber is what I'm saying. That's what. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There is a small possibility that they are an old subscriber who we didn't give a shout out to streams and streams ago. But if you are a new subscriber or an old subscriber, thank you to all subscribers and a another thank you to all people who are watching us just in general. Thanks to everybody. Thanks everyone all the time. How about that? <laughs> okay, I have to pay attention now. All right. We got poop. Rich, we got poop. We got lots of poop. Okay. We got poop, and we got things making poop. But that's okay. We're dealing with it. That's what I do here. You you can deal with the poop. I'll just sit back and watch. Oh, oh shit. I'm dealing with it. Dealing with poop. One more poop monster to go. One more poop monster to go. Get out of here. Get out of here. There we go. I fucking dealt with that poop monster like a champ. Great. Soul heart. Y yes, you did. You you really cried on that poop. <laughs> you you go, Jack. <laughs> what, what am I dealing with, a toddler? You did that poop good. <laughs> did I do my poopy good? Yes, you did. Mm. Read it. I reading it. Face Real or bros, kid. Rich? What is your opinion of me? Uh, you, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no problems with you. You're fine. You know what? You you're in the you're watching us, and um, and you you didn't say anything horribly offensive, so you seem like an all right dude. Yeah. Or yeah. chick. You seem like an all right person. So there you go. <laughs> At, at what point did I become an atheist? I don't think I ever really believed. To tell you the honest truth, church was something I was always kind of forced to go with. And I, mm -hmm. I never really got much out of it and always seemed kind of silly and mm -hmm. just wasn't for me. I, I, I have nothing against religious people, by the way. Mm -hmm. my, my atheism is just, it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. my, my fiance goes to church. I have no problems with it. It just... I'm not a believer. You can't make yourself believe, and I feel no desire to believe, so I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Rich. That sounds pretty even-handed <laughs> and, and calm-minded. <laughs> I, th I think you need some more extremist viewpoints here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it would be far more fun that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> People, people like it when they have the two bugs in the jar. I think it shake it and the bugs fight. But. Yeah, yeah. 
Agreed. Because yeah, that's the that's the one rule, everybody. If you remember, the one rule is be excellent to each other. That's the one <laughs> rule to rule to rule them all. I've heard they're making a third Bill and Ted movie. That's I have also heard that, and I'm pretty excited. That seems weird. Yes. They're they're old men. Mm -hmm. but How can you do those characters as old men? That'll be fun, especially like Keanu is now a pretty accomplished actor. Like, oh sure, he's no longer he's no longer Ted from Point Blank. <laughs> you know, so it's it's that to me is to me how Keanu Reeves is going to play that character is more fascinating than anything else. <laughs> hmm. You know, I went to. Uh, what did I have? There was a story I was going to tell. I've lost it. Oh, well. Okay. Well, that was a great story, Jack. Oh, atheism. I went to Catholic grade school. I don't know if you knew yeah. that about me. I I did too for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. All of my grade school was at Catholic grade schools. <laughs> so not only, <laughs> not only did we go to church on Sundays, but we got to go to church during school days too. It was mandatory. Oh, joy. Yeah, yeah. Joy. No, it was uh it was great. <laughs> it was super fantastic. <laughs> but yes. Believe what you believe. Be excellent to each other. Bill and Ted part three. You can't do those characters as old men. But that'll just—that's the fun part. It won't work. It, it will fail. They're either gonna—they're either gonna be so different mm -hmm. that there's no point in making a sequel, or they'll just—it'll be—or they'll act like they did when they were supposed to be younger, and it'll just be weird. I, I... Here's what I'll say: If they acted like they did when they were younger, which they won't, because if you remember at the end of Bill and Ted Two. They were a little bit older and a little bit wiser. Yeah, but you, yeah, the vi yeah, the, yeah, the last five minutes. Yeah, the last five uh, minutes, they you, were older and wiser and rock gods. You can't, you can't have those characters be mature. It wouldn't be the same type of movie. You're not making a Bill and Ted comedy film at that point. You're making some kind of bizarre new thing. But there, there is, there is a story in there. There is a story of older and wiser Bill and Ted. Perhaps they have, maybe it's their children. Maybe they're just there to usher their children into their own adventure. Maybe it's older Bill and Ted being older and wiser and, and being thrown into a situation that they're not equipped to deal with yet. You, you may as well do a modern day sequel to Look Who's Talking Now, oh, where they're, the kids are both adults and they just talk normally. No, that, that I mean. You may, as, you may as well just do that. <laughs> No, Rich, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> the... <laughs> and by ridiculous, I mean it's already in production. <laughs> just, just from you mentioning it in this stream, someone yeah. is already working on that movie. Yeah. So congratulations, Rich. You ruined Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> look, look who's talking because they're an adult and old enough to talk normally. And they do normal things. Isn't the sequel to Look Who's Talking just every single rom com that's out there? Uh, maybe. I, I, I don't know rom com. I, no. Where do you get rom com out of that? They're babies. Yeah, but the. Com com? It's just. No, because the, the, the main story of Look Who's Talking is the relationship between John Travolta and Christy Alley. It was a rom com. Look Who's Talking is a rom com. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Listen, don't quiz me about rom-coms, son. <laughs> I, hey, you're the undisputed expert of rom-coms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That okay. means a lot to me. <laughs> you saying that. <laughs> Jump. What am I doing? Oh, f oh, I messed up. I messed up, Rich. I you, messed know, up. you know how you, you, know how you do a, a modern-day gr grown-up Look Who's Talking sequel? What? Y you cast Bruce Willis, and you cast him as, like, an adult baby. <laughs> he's, like, he's got one of those fetishes. No. <laughs> so it's just no. Bruce Willis walking around with a diaper. No, you can't get. That's how you do it. it. No, 
No, that's that's crazy town. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna lose again. I'm totally gonna lose again. Not yet. No, you can't have him. It can't be fetishized, but you could have Bruce Willis as a man-child, just as a man who has no responsibilities or want of responsibilities. That could work. Okay, okay. But is there any point in doing that as a look who's talking sequel? Uh, only for name recognition. Let's tie this back into the Bill and Ted 3 and how it's weird. No, only for name recognition. But but Bill and Ted's had... Bill and Ted had characters. They had characters that we cared about, and so seeing where those characters ended up would be interesting to me as a fan of the series. So... As, as, a, as, as a fan of the, the the first two, just 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 let it let it let it lie. <laughs> let it lie. I'm I'm taking I'm taking my Ghostbusters stance here. Not that not that Bill and Ted is anywhere near as precious to me as Ghostbusters, but oh. my Ghostbusters stance is just let Sleeping Dogs lie. It's a good movie. It'll yeah. always be a good movie, and it doesn't need a follow up. Um. Yes. I'm gonna I can agree with you. I much like much like everything, I think there's a world in which there could be a good Ghostbusters sequel. G guts going nuts just because Jack fucked up your shout out. I'm gonna give it to you. Hey going good guts going nuts, shout out. Thank you for becoming a subscriber. What? And I did a terrible job. You did you no, you did great. Did great? I mean Ooh, okay. you know, great ish. Did good. I'm 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 looking back in the stream to when guts going nuts. Listen, Jack's playing right now. <laughs> I know I needed that ladder. I didn't have enough money to buy the ladder. Jack's playing right now, so I can't give shout outs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because once I start paying attention to the chat, I start losing. And I want to win, damn it. You got a lot of hearts. Yeah, I got all my hearts back. I really thought I was going to lose. But I got all my hearts back. According to OctoJ, they subscribed near the beginning of the stream. Oh. Then I'm sure I gave you a shout out. Or maybe I didn't. I don't know. I'm sorry, Guts Going Nuts. I like you, Guts Going Nuts. Do you think Disney will recast Indiana Jones or get old Indy? Uh, if they make another one, they'll probably go the recasting route because everybody hated Crystal Skull. We can only hope. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, it's another one. Who cares? If it's if it's not, you know, young Harrison Ford, who cares? It's a different movie at that point. Yeah, but that's a movie where it could, you know, like James Bond. No, because they've, they've, there's there's dozens of generic adventure movies. None of them are Indiana Jones movies. I mean, like Alan uh, Alan Quarterman Mines. What was that one? There's uh, there's another knockoff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. Alan Quartermines? What, what was his name? Alan something in the Lost. Ah, uh, whatever. You're, I don't give a shit. You're talking crazy town. You are making up words and saying them as if they're real words. I do that sometimes. Most times, <laughs> people don't notice. Uh -huh. I'm noticing. Ooh, a secret. Thank you. Alan Quartermines. Quartermain. Alan Quartermain, Quartermain, whatever. Yeah, whatever, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, at the point you're, you're recasting Harrison Ford, it may as well just be any kind of generic adventure movie with... Mm with that type of 1930s hero, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, but it's just, it's an excuse to make an old school adventure movie. An Indiana Jones, you know? But you need to drag the Indiana Jones name into it just because. Okay. Well, just because, just because that's the excuse. Just like James Bond. Like, you could have just a spy movie, you know? Like, yeah. here, here's the new spy. But James Bond is the institution. And, like like uh, the Bourne identity, which actually did very well for itself and didn't need to call itself James Bond anything. Yeah, but I dislike. You the can Bourne. you can make a new franchise. You oh you that, can that is possible. It is. 
I really disliked the Bourne movies. And they can be successful. Putting that out there. Yeah, yeah, they can be. Uh, listen, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying it's not the worst thing in the world. Brand Branding is not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, but if they make it, I'm not going to give a shit about it. It's not for you to give a shit about. For everyone else. <laughs> All right. All right, then you can you can come back to the theater and complain about it. Oh. And I'll say, well, what did you expect? Well, it's one thing. It's one thing if they remake Indiana Jones and that, you know, like James Bond, like, okay, here's Indiana Jones. He's young and handsome and he's the, he's, uh, I don't know, who's, who would be a good Indiana Jones nowadays? I don't know. Harrison, well, not anymore, but Harrison Ford's the only person I can imagine in that role. No, like, like, who's the, who's the hot young? I don't give a shit. You don't give don't. a shit? No. Like, what's, uh, what it's, do... not, it's not, it's not, not good for that role. Harrison Ford made that fucking role. Yeah, but like someone like a, like a... Like, like Peter like Peter Vakeman, that is not a role you can recast. <laughs> it does not work that way. You know, uh, here's here's my here's my go-to just because he's hot right now. Like the like your Chris <laughs> your Chris Pratt's. You know, your Star Lord. Yeah. You, you know, he would make a decent Indiana Jones. A little humor, a little little suaveness. Just make a new franchise and don't call it Indiana Jones. That's pointless. That's absolutely pointless. That's what, that's what gets the movie made. That's what... Oh, fuck. That's what sells the movie. You need you need the something to sell the movie. And then you set yourself up to be compared to the old Indiana Jones movies. So make it as good. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just... Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Just make a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easy. I've made zero movies, and I can tell you how easy it is. <laughs> oh my god, you do have a pizza roll now. Fart Bubbler, are you a new subscriber? If you are, thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it. By the way, I really like the name Fart Bubbler. You know why, Rich? Why? Because it has the word fart in it. Do you remember American Flatulators? Mm. You, no, you don't. You wouldn't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I do. I, rem I do. I remember how amused I was that you guys had to watch it, and not me. In Indiana Jones was not really a ripoff of other movies. It was a homage. It was done in a, a similar style to other type of movies. There was not an older series from the '30s called, you know, Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones serials. I mean, no. I mean. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was that was in response to a a, a chat person. Oh, what, what did the chat person say? Uh, Indiana Jones was ripping off something that came before it. Absolutely. No, it, well, it Indiana... was it was a homage. Okay. It, like much like Star Wars, Indiana Jones was a homage to the adventure you know, serials. You, you know, you know what was different between those other adventure serials and and Indiana Jones? Ah. Harrison Ford. <laughs> well, no, no, that's not the thing. Her that was Harrison different. Ford. Harrison Ford was part of the reason the thing that was different, but the real thing that was different, Rich, and you should know this, is budget. Sure. They sure. they gave corny adventure serials a budget and a gravitas to match the budget. And they made fantastic movies like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. So if we wanted to recreate that Indiana Jones feel what we need to do is find something that people enjoy, that's made cheaply, that w or people enjoyed and was made cheaply 30 years ago, and make it important and with a big budget now. So 30 years ago was, was what, the 80s? <laughs> something like that, yes. So what was made, <laughs> what was churned out cheaply in the 80s? What was the new thing of the 80s? The 80s wasn't a decade where they churned out things cheaply. It was a decade where they spent money on things. Oh, I'm sure. Well, but that's the thing. You have to find the thing that they didn't spend money I guess, on. I guess, I guess slasher movies were made cheaply. Sure. Damn it, that's the worst power-up. I hate my power-up. 
So, sure, slasher movies. That was an 80s staple, absolutely. But slasher movies existed before that. What else, What did the 80s bring? To... Uh, this is all you, Jack. I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know either. I don't know either. And in films, that's right. The 80s invented your teenage coming-of-age film. Your, Ooh, your, risky bus your risky business, your 16 candles, your breakfast clubs. There you go. Your, your Bill and Ted's. There you go. So what we need is for someone to take the coming-of-age story seriously and give it a, a super big budget. Your, your tits-filled porkies, you know, your, your comedy sex adventure. <laughs> this is a horrible idea. I hate this. The is, path yeah. That I'm, I'm just, down. I'm just letting you go on. Um, thank you. Thank you for letting me go on, but it's, this is a horrible idea. Nobody should do this idea. I've and, never watched a man dig his own grave before. Yeah. You know, I was, I was trying to, I was hoping I could come up with something to prove a point and be like, Ooh, that, that is a good idea. And I couldn't. So, you know, Okay, okay. Failure is always an option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about the big budget remake of I Dream of Genie? Of I Dream of Genie? Try, trying to bring it around full circle, Jack. I'm that, trying to that rescue is, this, that's this line of thinking. That's incredibly full circle. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981. Hmm. But then you would just be, see, like, if you homage Indiana Jones, all you're doing is homaging an homage. You're making a copy of a copy. Hold on. You couldn't come up with something because the 80s sucked. Gremlins, Indiana Jones, RoboCop, a Predator, Terminator. Ooh, Predator. Everything good came out of the 80s. Yeah. We're recycling the 80s now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely are. Yeah, you know what? Gremlins. Back to the future. Gremlins. Creature films. This is what we need, Rich. Creature die, films. Die Hard. Oh, Die Hard. You mean the best movie ever made? Everything good came out of the 80s. 80s are one of the best decades for movies, in my opinion. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, okay. That helped. That actually helped. I did something that helped. Um, yeah, creature, rubber puppet monster movies. We need someone to take rubber puppet monster movies seriously. Like Gremlins. Like Gremlins. And Which was already taken seriously in Gremlins. Hmm. Touche. Ooh, tears up. Fuck yeah, I'll take that. You know what? You're absolutely right. Did Gremlins have a... I mean, Gremlins had a decent budget. All right, Gremlins nailed it with the <laughs> with the uh, taking it seriously and having a decent budget. All right, just let's, let's just watch Gremlins. How about that? That sounds like a fantastic idea. What? Fuck. Oh, just dying. I know, you're not seeing it yet. Oh, okay, okay. It's not doing well, but there's well, a... I'll, I'll assume you're going to pull through and, and beat this game at the end. That's just, that's just the assumption I'm working under right now. I think that's a great assumption. Let's make that. Let's all make that assumption. Fuck. Except for it's totally not going to happen because I'm fucking dying. Fuck! Oh, nope, I'm going to die. I'm going to die right now. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not dead yet. It's coming, it's coming, oh, here, oh, no, I might make it. I might just make it. Christ. Rich, why am I so bad at video games? That's a question that needs to be asked. Because you're an adult. With things. <laughs> I've been not bad at this video game before. I have proof that I have been not bad at <laughs> at this video game before. Smelter Wedge and the Elephant... Uh, your name? Mm -hmm. Shout out for subscribing! <laughs> Smelter Wedge and Nefalurious something. Ooh. Something name, pronounced name. Yeah. 
Sounded like a very fancy name. <laughs> it's got like 18 syllables. Well, there you go. I can, I can, I can make out smelter. Smelter wedge in all. Oh, smelter wedge in all of us. There we go. There, there we go. Smelter wedge in all of us. Smelter wedge in all of us. That's a that's a decent name. That yeah. ro rolls right off the tongue, by the way. Okay. Rich, Rich, what's it like working with Mike? Uh, depressing. <laughs> just, just horribly depressing. <laughs> Rich, Rich, have you played Xenonauts yet? Uh, no, not not in the last 15 minutes. I have not played <laughs> Xenonauts. We've already talked about Rich and his playing of Xenonauts. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Rich, a Avenge Elevenfold would like a shout out for being an educator in the American school system. Shout out to a, a, a what is it? A, avenged eleven fold, yeah. eleven fold for being an educator in the American school system. But please try and do a better job in the future. <laughs> please, we we need you too. Honestly, I, yeah. I, maybe you have a better idea than anyone exactly how <laughs> fucked we are. <laughs> do, you, do you know how fucked we are? <coughs> avenged eleven fold. The, the answer is very, by the way. See, they're, they're, now they're, they're, they're asking about Xenonauts even more now. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the joke now. They got their joke now. Fuck. Fuck. Get out of here. 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 Fuck. 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 Ugh. I need a better power up, Rich. Uh, yes, you do. Go get a better power-up, Jack. I can't. Why not? These runs don't have power-up rooms. You have to well, play a, play a normal run. I'm, I'm doing the challenges. I'm doing the challenges. They're more challenging. I, I quite honestly just... I do not have drug stories to tell you. <laughs> I, I have z literally zero drug stories because mm -hmm. I'm a teetotaler, so... Mm -hmm. A teetotaler. It's been a while yes. since I've heard anyone say teetotaler. They usually, usually refer to somebody who doesn't drink. Right. But for me, I I, I, I use it because I haven't done drugs or drank. So sure. I don't... You know what that makes you? That makes you a mega teetotaler. It makes me all the, the teest totaler who ever totaled a tea. Nice. That makes me the Boston teetotaler party. <laughs> does that make any sense? It no. Does. That made perfect sense. I loved it. <coughs> a total tea totaler party. Yeah. <laughs> Use one bomb, get two. Yes, la lady tea totaler. Ooh, the cat nice. That, I can't take credit for that. That was a chat coming. Oh, well. Tea, tea totaler the cat lady. By who said that? I don't know if somebody said it before, but. Home, hometown markup said that. Well, it, it's a good one. That was a good. That's a good riff. Shit. Get him, flies. Get him. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, I'm fucking dying. Ah, oh, I fucking died. Ah, oh, fuck. <coughs> Why not... am I coughing? I, I have not been coughing this much. It's just maybe it's because I'm talking loud. Yeah. I'm like yelling. Yeah. I think that's it. Fuck. Rich, I died. I'm really upset. I'm really upset with how poor I'm doing. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm completely neutral to how poor you're doing. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I feel... I feel like I'm failing the game. I feel like I'm failing anything. life. Yeah. And that's that's more important. That's so. not true, Rich. You should, you should feel good. Rich, we're living the dream. 
Whose dream, I don't know, but we're living it. Oh! Do you know what story I was going to tell? What? My Kim Kardashian story. Oh, okay, yes. Do you remember the, the that? Eight, I remember that from eight hours ago. Remember that from eight hours ago? I have, a, I have a Kim Kardashian story. And this is why, by the way, I give... I, 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 I One, I respect Kim Kardashian for her crude and amazing business sense. Um, and two, I think Kim Kardashian is a lovely lady. So, here's my Kim Kardashian story. Okay. We were doing this video. Uh, it was a high, it was one of the high five montages. It was high five Super Bowl. And at the time, Kim Kardashian was dating a good footballer named Reggie Bush, who was playing in the Super Bowl. Okay. So as we're in, uh, we're in Miami for the Super Bowl. <laughs> th this will give you an idea of the year. Whenever the Super Bowl was in Miami. We're in Miami, and our job to make this video, it was the video consisted of two guys high-fiving, and then whenever we could, we would get a celebrity or a, an athlete in the video. And people were down there for the Super Bowl. So, Kim Kardashian is down in Miami because Reggie Bush is in the Super Bowl or in the Pro Bowl or something. I forget. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Our people talk to her people, and she says, yes, I will be in your high-five video, but we need to, we need to film it in this shop in this certain part of Miami. And of course we say absolutely because Kim Kardashian is a big name. We will go anywhere you need us to go in Miami. And as it turns out, the shop was owned by one of her sisters. It was their like boutique fashion shop. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, part of that is like, oh, okay, you know, we film in the shop and they see that in the video, that's good business sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we, we film our little bit with her where the guys high five and she's in it. Uh, and I've never found Kim before this. I've never found Kim Kardashian to be particularly attractive because I've only seen her on TV and on magazine covers. But yeah. seeing that woman in real life. Rich. <laughs> OK. God damn. <laughs> she is a very attractive lady. And, and by the way, I still see her like on magazines and don't find her attractive but in person maybe it was maybe it was her just her pheromones that <laughs> she was putting out yeah I but what know. is her per what is her personality like who gives a fuck <laughs> i i do jack because i'm not a a mindless neanderthal okay <laughs> okay I, I i want a woman that i can respect in the morning hey rich medi morst medi morst thanks for subscribing we super appreciate it um, here's, here's the thing. I'm sure she's a, a decent person. I don't care if she's a decent person. I've, I'm talking purely on a looks basis. <laughs> I have, I've never found her attractive, but seeing her in person, she's a very attractive lady. Um, so, you know, we, we get our, our shots done with her, but her business sense goes beyond just having us film the video in the store, because as we are walking out of the store, suddenly... There is paparazzi everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they weren't there when we showed up. You know, we showed up before her and, and set up our shot and, you know, made sure that it would be a quick five minutes because that's what we promise all celebrities. It'll just be five minutes. As we leave, all the paparazzi is there. They're taking pictures. She she does her thing and leaves, right? And we're, yeah. talk and we're talking to the paparazzi. It's like, how the hell did you guys know? And they say, oh, you know, her... She told us. She told us where she would be. And I'm sure that's information that they, you know, was not normally that they would give out, but they saw that we were also filming something. So not, mm. o not only did she get placement of our video of her sister's boutique, but she got paparazzis to take her picture in front of her boutique. I'm sure they tweeted about where they were shooting these pictures at. It was all a business thing to get people to know where her sister's shop was in Miami. Okay, okay. And th huh. that kind of business smarts has to be respected. Okay. You know, she has a brand. She understands how it works. She, when the video came out, she tweeted it. She, she did well by the video. She, she's a decent lady. So Kim Kardashian, decent lady, smart business lady. That's all I got. Jack, I, I want to interject. There's a whole bunch of people in the chat now yeah. that are defending Neanderthals. <laughs> 
truth about Neanderthals is that they weren't dumb, but they were sweet, and sensitive, and kind. And... So apparently, I'm I'm not politically correct because I just insulted Neanderthals. I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Uh, well, th there you go. There's nothing else you need to know. Uh, <laughs> in any case, that's my Kim Kardashian story. She's a fine lady. Um, and, and, and by the way, Jack's theme song is, is Anaconda. <laughs> everyone is, everyone is making assumptions that because I find Kim Kardashian to be attractive, I'm an ass man, and those assertions <laughs> are correct. <laughs> Absolutely. And yes, I will play FTL now. We're going to play FTL. Um, oh, oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. Right? Right. But first, let's all wish Isaac a happy birthday. For anyone who has not bought The Binding of Isaac, it is under a dollar on Steam right now. Go fucking buy it for 74 cents great 